Good day, everyone. Welcome to another session of our Python Refresher 2 for learners. So in this session, we're going to practice conditionals and iteration. So for conditionals, we have already discussed the basic syntax. Like if you want branching, you have if condition followed by the particular block of code that you want to execute, given that the condition is true. Otherwise, you could also you could also have else statement, which executes when the condition is false. So this part will execute when the condition is true. And this part will execute when the condition is false. On the other hand, we have also discussed the basic patterns of iteration, like you have a while followed by the condition. And the block of code that you would like to repeat. So this repeats as long as the condition is true. And you have another pattern like the for loop in which you're iterating elements or items in a sequence or it could be a range of uh, values. So still a sequence of numbers. And you have a block of code that you would like to repeat as long as it is within the sequence. Within the sequence. Although this syntax is not enough for you to be good at programming, you need to practice and have a know-how on when to use these kinds of patterns. And that's the purpose of having a practice. To practice conditionals as our goal for today and iteration as well, as we apply it to basic patterns like the triangle, pyramid patterns, and so on. And we will also declare simple functions without parameters for code reuse. So functions in programming is a block of code which only runs when it is called. So the idea is it runs when called is a very common beginner's mistake. Because uh, beginners usually think that if you define a function, it will immediately run. Okay, but there are two parts to a function. First will be the definition. You define it with a def keyword. So function has a def keyword and its function name and the block of code that you would like to reuse or repeat as long as you have to call it. So the idea is the second part of a function is the calling. You need to call it. So the, you have to call it using the function name. So the idea is if you have a drill, okay, can, again, you could just uh, post the video and write the function that prints hello world in this case. So again, you will use the uh, def keyword and then whatever the function name that you could come up with arbitrary. So in this case, I will just call it greetings or greet and this grid is simply printing hello world. So print and okay, just hello world. That's it. Again, as I mentioned earlier, the common beginner's mistake is to expect that this will print hello world. And indeed, if I run this, it printed nothing. Uh, because to go back to the definition of a function, it will only run when it is called. And currently, this is not calling. This is just definition. This is, not, this is just defining it. Okay, so I hope that's clear. So if we're going to, to call it, you call it by the name, uh, like uh, in this case, the name is greet and it will perform, it will execute the code and that's what we want. So the, in this case, we define a function 
which only executes if we run it by calling it. Okay, so now that's the that part is uh, done. Let's go to the first drill. So the first in this first drill, okay, write a Python program that prints uh, the following box pattern. Okay, the pattern is here. This is the output. And then you could just use random string or random characters to do this. Uh, generate a random uppercase. So we could uh, write a function for this actually where it prints a random character. So let me de define something. Maybe I want to call it a put character. And in this case, my putting of character, I will simply print a random character. Say if I have a, a certain character, which I will choose a random, a random that in this case, random choice. Random choice will basically um, accept a sequence. Uh, like a string. So I will get a string, which is uppercase, for example. Uh, string ASCII uppercase. And from that character, I will simply print. So let's test this function. Okay, let's run this again. Okay, uh, works well. So the, the function is returning random sets of or random characters, which is uppercase. Uh, take note, although this is printing something, uh, let me just uh, let me just put a comment here that this is not returning. Okay, the character. So this is printing, this is only printing. So what do I mean with that? If I assign it to something, okay, like if I have a letter, and then if you assign put character, okay, it will not store my letter. Yes, it printed the letter Q. But if you print the letter, If you print the letter, then it will give me none. That simply means that there is no return. Uh, or the return here is none. Well, if I want to return the character, I will simply execute return char here. Uh, return uh, char. Uh, in, in this case, if I return the character, then the moment that I re, uh, Let's run this. The moment that I execute this assignment again and print the letter, then it will give me my letter, uh, which is S. Uh, but for now, for our purpose, uh, this will be sufficient. Okay, we're just printing patterns anyway. So this pattern is enough. So let me just define this one as uh, with a doc string. So it's a very good practice to uh, just write a comment or a document for documentation for your function. And this is a multi-line comment if you remembered from last meeting. Okay, the triple single quotes is a designation for a comment. And let me just comment that uh, this function prints, or I will just say prints a random uppercase letter. That's it. And if I run this, if I uh, say ask for help, okay, if I'm not familiar with the function, it will already print me the doc document string. Okay, this will be very helpful. So, help of this function, okay, this function. Okay, returns, let me see, is that help put car? 
Okay? So, help on put character. This prints a random uppercase letter. So, it's very good practice to just write a doc string for the function that you created. Okay. So, we have a put character now. And let's proceed with our first uh, drill. So, write a write a Python program that prints the following box pattern using random string. Uh, we already have the function to simply print a random character. And in this case, we're just going to create the box. Okay, this one is our goal. So again, please post the video and try it yourself. Now that you have uh, tried, it, tried it yourself, so let me solve this one. So hopefully our solution will be similar. Again, the, the goal here is not to come up with an optimized solution, but just to practice conditional statements and iteration. So the way that I go about this problem is just to declare a height uh, variable. Maybe the height here is 5 and the width. So let me set that to 10 and then just iterate. So for I in range with respect to height and for J. So remember that do not use, do not repeat I again because it, they might, uh, they will interfere with each other, I and J, if they're of the same identifier. So with and then this is a box, so let me just print my character. Or I already had a function for that. In fact, that's the purpose of declaring this so that I will be able to reuse. So this function is very good for code for code reuse. And in this case, let's reuse it. So put character. Will this give me a box? Well, let's just let's just see the output. So the output did not give us a box yet. In fact, it's very far. It's a pole. Uh, the idea is we wanted a box. Okay, but we need to eliminate the new lines. They need to print in one line. Okay, for us to come up with a box pattern like this. So in that case, uh, let me modify my put character function and if you recall from before if you ask the help on um, print okay the pattern is uh, print has a default end and that default end is a new line so for you to have a printing within the same line you need to override the default. And that is what we will do. So let's override the default with an end, which is a just a blank. In this case, a blank character. So in that case, if the default is already blank, so let's just run this again. And it's it's a line, but this is not what we, what we really wanted. We, we wanted a box. So in that case, if we really wanted a box, we need a new line after the for loop. So this will be print a new line. Okay, and let's just present this one better with an extra print on the top. Nice. So we have already the box that we wanted. So we could make this more compelling like this so i i just made the width longer so this will be our box of course you could you could easily come up with a function out of the box so the idea is you just use the def keyword and indent remember that indentation is very important so let me call this a box and uh, after i defined that I could just call the box and it will give me the box that I wanted. 
So pretty much that's it for the first activity. So you have now a box of random uppercase letters. Okay, next drill will be to write a Python program that prints the hollow box in this case. So I will simply recycle the existing. Again, please pause your video and uh, try the problem yourself. It will really help you a lot if you try to practice. Okay, so if you if you have already posted it and uh, come up with your own solution, uh, let me solve it myself. So I will just recycle the old code. And I will just rename my function to be a hollow box. And the size, I will just change the size later. So the goal for this particular output Okay, it's just to control. It's just to control the the middle parts. Okay, to print spaces there. So, let's review if you have understood the solution for the box. So, if if we run box again and come up with a box, let's just be clear. If you already understood this pattern. This, okay, this height is controlled by the I. Okay, so it's controlled by I, this one. I is controlling basically the height. So this is I equals zero, I equals one, I equals two, I equals three, and finally I equals four. And in the same manner, J for the columns, it's controlling the columns. So this is J0 uh, up to 49 if this is 50. So I is controlling the rows and J is con controlling the columns. So please keep that in mind for you to control. We need to delete these characters in the middle. So if you already know that part, or you understood that part already. Okay, then we could uh, proceed with uh, analyzing the solution. So for the hollow box, we need to have an if else condition here. So we could just say that if your i, which is controlling the height, is greater than the middle. So the middle is actually greater than zero. And okay, i is less than the last index for the height, uh, which is height minus one. And uh, this is height minus one because we started at zero. So the last index for the height, if you have a height of four, or if you have a height of five, in this case, the last index here is four. So this is that's why this is height minus one. So otherwise, if it's the first and the last, okay, we will simply put the character. So maybe I will come up with another function here. Okay, I will define uh, something for use. Although this is a very simplistic function. Uh, maybe I will say put blank. Okay, a blank character in this case. So let me just print something, which is a blank print, a blank character, and let me just end this with blank. Okay, so the doc string will simply say prints a blank character. Okay, blank character. And let me just do that for, for my hollow box. So if, if it's in the middle, I will simply put blank. Otherwise, if it's for the first and then the last, I will put the character. So this is first and last. So in that case, I will simply do that and uh, hopefully 
Okay, we will we will get so box is printed. Nothing is printed, by the way, because this is just the definition. So let me call the actual function. And not this is not necessarily what I what I wanted. Okay, but this is what I expected. So you expect a blank because you're putting a blank. What's missing now for our box is we wanted it to to have the the sides. Okay, we want to have the side letters, and you could easily handle that with an, another if else. So again, we are not concerned about optimization here. We're just trying to practice conditionals. Uh, one optimization for this is you could use simply string and multiply blank with a number, an integer, like 10 or something. And it will produce 10 blanks. Okay, but right now our concern is just to practice if else. So I will have, I will say that if J, okay, if my column, uh, in fact, I could I could simply rewrite this for this to be more clear. Instead of using I, I will use row and J, I will use column. It might help a, uh, a bit for it to become more informative and will give you the context uh, of, of what are these numbers are. So if column is zero, so for this is for the first first side or column is with minus one. Okay, that's the last column. We're going to put the character. Otherwise, we're just putting a blank character. And hopefully this is what I wanted already. Okay, so I hope you get the idea that by by giving this condition, column is equals to zero. This corresponds to the first side, and the other condition, this corresponds to the final side. Now, okay, let's run this. Let's clear the output first, and let's run this one. And this is what we wanted already. Let's change it a bit. Maybe this is 40. And let me make this 10. Okay, just so you see that uh, this is really adjusting. Okay, the box is hollow and it's it's adjusting to what we wanted. And that's it. So you have now the box pattern. Okay, so let's move on to the next practice drill. So in this case, the this practice drill is write a Python program that prints the following right triangle. So this is now a right triangle pattern. So with a cer certain height. Okay, and I believe this is this is easy. So the idea is you could set a certain uh, again. Please try to post. Okay, post your video and. Try the problem yourself. Okay. So after you post the video and you have tried it yourself, uh, let me solve this. Hopefully we have a similar solution. So height will be an arbitrary number. Okay. Could be 10, could be 5. Let's try 10. And I will have a range. So range for a row in height. Okay, let ha let's control the columns. Okay, for columns, uh, wait, four columns in range. Okay, so height will be or the number of the number of letters are decreasing. So that means. Uh, we could depend on the row. The row is increasing. Okay, the number is increasing. So, but it will start with, it should start with one. Okay, so this is one. So for column in range, let me print my character. Or let me just put character, which is the 
the function that we have defined earlier. Let's run this. Okay, and we need to put the new lines with a simple print. And that's it. <laughs> so this, this is one of the easiest way or easiest problems that we have. So the idea is you have an upright or a, a right triangle, okay, which is left-sided. So again, you could simply convert this to a function if you like. So you could just uh, define this is a right okay, triangle. Okay, right T. So, okay, uh, right triangle, which is on the left side. Okay, so right T and Okay, that's it. So for the next drill, write a Python program that prints, okay, it prints the following hollow right triangle. So it's similar as before. The problem is similar as before. It's a right triangle oriented to the left, but you need to make it hollow. Again, uh, please post the video and try this yourself. Okay, now that you have tried it yourself, uh, let me uh, solve it for you as well. So we could, uh, I will simply recycle the first function with the right triangle and then just come up with an if else. So right T, so I will say it is a hollow right t and let's try to run this again it's not yet hollow but i will just check the execution control b and it executed fine so the way to study the problem is we are going to control okay a certain height so remember that this is i equals zero I equals one and so on. So I want to control this. I want to erase this one, control this part in the middle to make it hollow. So that, that control will be when I is greater than one. Okay, when I is greater than one, this, this is uh, two onwards. And I don't want to control the last one when i is greater than 1 and should be i is uh, less than the last one will be the height minus 1 keep to keep it general so what do i want to do there i want to put blank okay let's see so let's try that approach so i will just say uh, if I is greater than one and I is less than height minus one. Okay, I will simply put a blank there. So put blank. Otherwise, I will just execute. I'll just put characters there. Control B. So hollow right T I is not defined. Ah, okay. So row, row. Okay, this is this is not exactly what we wanted, but uh, we are one step closer to what we wanted. Okay, the idea is we need to put the first one when I is zero, right? And the last ones. Okay, so you could just say when i is greater than, when row is greater than 1, okay, else put character. So within the middle, 
I could just come up with an, another if else with respect to the columns. So if column, I could just say if column is zero or okay, my column is or oh wait. So if column is row minus one, okay. So let's just say row minus one. Okay. Then we are going to put a character. So put the character else we are going to, to put the blank. There. So this is what, what we exactly what we wanted. Uh, again, let me clarify that the purpose here is not optimization. We could still optimize this code, but the purpose here is just to practice, to practice if else condition. So middle part, so this middle part, I know that the, the range, this range is basically covered when row is greater than one, because here row is one, zero, one. So this is two to the length minus one or the height minus one. So that's why the condition is when it's greater than one uh, and when the row is less than height minus one. So that's the purpose of the first condition. And you have to take care of the columns as well because the columns, you only need to print the first one and the last one. So first one, last one, first one, last one. If you want to print that, well, execute this, uh, this inner if condition. It will take care of that. So it will take care of first and last, printing the first and last random letters. That's it. So that's it for that hollow right uh, exercise. We have also another drill here. So another drill will be to come up with an inverted right triangle. So inverted right. Okay, so in this case, what we have to do is just to reverse the sequence. So let's try this. Again, please pause the video and uh, try it yourself. Okay, so now that uh, you have tried it yourself, so let's, uh, let's solve this one. So we could come up with a height variable here and let me set the height of maybe 10. And then come up with a range. So for row and range height. So height is, will continue from zero to height minus one. So for the columns, for columns, we need a higher value for the columns. So a higher value for the columns decreasing, so higher to lower. So we could set the range to be from from height up to from height up to zero. Okay, we could try that from height height up to zero and decrease it by one. So this here is the um, let's clarify this. So this one is the lower limit. Zero is the upper limit in this case. And this one is the step. Okay, so to, to investigate that further, all you need to do is to ask for help. Okay, help range, uh, wait. So help range. Okay, so for the range, uh, the syntax is, 
Okay, this one. Uh, it could either you could either put one value there, that will be the stop, or you could say start, you could say stop, and you could also include a step. The default step will be one. Okay, so in this case, we need to override that. So let's put a character. And otherwise, we will simply print a new line. Okay, and let's try to run this. So let's let's run this. Okay, so we did not get what we wanted. We need it to be decreasing. So it's height. So it should this should be from row. Okay, row two because height is constant. So row is decreasing. Okay. Mm, well, let's play with this. Okay, it still it still did not get that give us what we wanted. Okay, so row decreasing. So because this counts, this is what we wanted. Ah, okay. So we need, in this case, we need to to use okay height minus okay height minus row. Okay, let's cross our fingers if it, if this works. Okay, it worked. So we need to decrease. Okay, the number. So earlier it did not decrease it. It's it merely counts down. <laughs> but if it counts down, okay, even if it counts down, it will not give you the decreasing pattern. So let's just check if the height is correct here. So one, two, three, four, five. So it give us a correct height. Okay. So let me just call this function. Uh, let me define this function as inverted right triangle. Okay, so inverted right triangle. Okay, and let me proceed with the next one. So for our next drill, you need to come up with a hollow pattern, the hollow inverted right triangle. So for, for it to make to make hollow, again you need the if else condition. So again, please pause the video and try this exercise yourself. So the only variable that they're going to declare here is the height, the same as before. Uh, in fact, if you're done with your own solution, let me uh, give my own solution as well. So this will be uh, hollow. The function name is a bit long. Uh, but this will be if else. So I will use if else. Okay. Hollow inverted right. So let's... Okay, so this is, the control will be, okay, you could control when i is greater than zero. So i equals one, say so when i is greater than zero, and it is less than, okay, when i is, or when, when the row, when the row is less than height minus two. So you could do that particular control just to delete the blank characters there. So let's do that. So first let's come up with a blank character. So uh, the idea is if row is greater than <clears throat> zero, and row is less than height minus two. Okay, because this time it's inverted. 
we're going to put a blank character. Okay, otherwise, we're going to put that particular character. Okay, so in this case, uh, we will not get what we wanted, but this is a milestone. Okay, so this is the milestone that we expect. Okay, the next thing here is just to put the letters. Okay, and you could just come up with the if else. Again, the goal here is not to optimize, but to practice if else condition. So you could you could limit the column. So if column is equals to zero or the, the first column or if it is equals to the last one, the last one being if this is height minus row, so the last one is height minus row minus one. So kind of a, a tricky, a tricky, tricky index. But I, I'm just utilizing the range for the column. And this is the last range. So in that case, you're going to put a character. So put the character otherwise. Okay, you're going to put the blank. Okay, this is what we wanted. Let's make it more larger. Okay, so uh, this is the example of the hollow inverted. We simply added the if else condition. And you have your hollow inverted triangle. Next, write a Python program that prints the following right triangle pattern. So this, this time around, it's still a right triangle, but it's oriented to the right. So right oriented, right triangle. <laughs> This is a bit long. So, okay. Let's just say, again, let's uh, please post the video and try it yourself. Okay, so after trying it yourself, let's see. Uh, let's see what, what we have here. So same height variable. Let me just set it to five. And okay, another for loop. So for row in range height. Um, in this case, we're going to put blanks as well. So you are going to put blanks beforehand. And after putting blanks, you're going to put the characters. So I say that I could I could think of this as is uh, the way I think of this is you could think of this as a big box. Okay, so and in that within that big box, you could control the element. So. In my case, I will simply recycle for uh, row in range height and then for column in and the range height. So we could say a certain range. So if else, so if, okay, uh, let's put a character. If your index for the column, uh, we need to control the column now. Uh, in this case, if the column is, okay, if the column is greater than, 
Okay, what is this? You could you could use the row. Okay, if the column is greater than uh, the row or height minus row, height minus row. Okay, height minus row is this. So the height could be, in this case, 10. And then minus row. Is it row plus one or row? Okay, maybe row plus one. So minus row plus one. Let's just correct this if the logic is not correct. So I'm going to put a character. Else going to put a blank okay put a blank okay and let's put a new line here okay let's see if we get we got what we wanted doesn't look good so let's put a new line here let's clear this first Control B, and we get sort of what we wanted, but this is five. So one, two, three, four. This is four. So if we use row minus one or minus row, okay, this is three. So we need, okay, this is actually correct already. So we need to extend, is it the height that we need to extend or the columns? So in this case, the first height should be covered already. So if this is, this should be covered already, height minus row, greater or equal okay this is what we wanted so one two three four five okay so if we have a height of 10 okay you could simply count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten that's it that's what we wanted So what should I call this function? Def. I already have right triangle. So okay, right triangle. The orientation is So this is, this is still a right triangle, but the T may be, may be uh, for the orientation is right oriented. So triangle, which is right oriented. So TR. Okay, let me just uh, put a doc string here now. Uh, although later on you could just summarize it with a certain doc string. So this is a uh, right oriented. Right. Okay, right triangle. Okay, so that's my function. Okay. So next exercise. Next exercise is for you to write a Python program that prints a hollow right triangle. So same with that orientation earlier. Uh, wait. Okay, same with this orientation before but a hollow one so it should be hollow like this okay well i will simply recycle what i did 
Uh, but before I recycle it, please try it yourself. You could recycle anything that you did. And then just come up with the hollow ones. Just for practice. Okay, so hollow ones now. So let me just name this my my hollow right triangle, which is right oriented. So this will be hollow right triangle. Okay. So currently, this is not hollow yet. Let's just see the current output. So let me just. So what I need to eliminate here. Okay, I need to eliminate this third. Okay, starting from the third. So eliminate all of this. So again, the. The pattern that we are going for is just control the height. So if this is this part has a row of two, uh, because this is zero, one, two, up to height minus one. So this height minus one here. Okay, so we could go for that. And the idea is. Where do I control that? Okay, so column in range and then height. So if column is less than is equals to height, put the character. So the putting of the character could be controlled. So this if here will be controlled. So instead of putting all, so I could simply say if column is equal, okay, if that is equal, then I will I will put the character otherwise not. Okay, and I get the partial, partially, partial solution. So I get rid of the others, but I need the this one. I need the straight line, okay, which is, I could say that that will be column equals, column is equals to height minus one, because that's the light blast element. Okay, nice. So that, that's this is what I wanted. How about the last one? So the last one. Okay, I need to just fill this up with the characters. Or I could say if I. Okay, you could say that or I is equals to the last one which is height minus one because this is indeed this is the last one the last i i is equals to just the height minus one okay height so or this is row Okay, that's it. So this is what I wanted. This is my uh, hollow, inverted hollow right triangle. Okay, or right oriented hollow triangle. Okay, so hopefully you got the solution. Okay, just to clarify the solution a bit. Okay, this condition will take care of this line, okay, while this condition will take care of the vertical. And finally, 
Okay, this row solution will take care of the other line. The last. Hope that solution is clear. Okay, let's proceed to the next one. Um, write a Python program that's a pyramid. So the pyramid, this will be very similar to the triangle that we have, this one. So the solution here for the right uh, triangle for the inverted or right-oriented triangle. So let me recycle that. And again, if you want to try this, please pause your video and code it. Okay, so if you have tried to solve this already, okay, uh, let's just compare the solution or you could skip to the next drill if you want. So I will simply recycle the pyramid. So I will just call this pyramid function now. And in this pyramid pattern, so print a pyramid pattern. Okay, in this pyramid pattern, we're going to uh, let, let's run this again. Okay, so the way to extend this, you just extend it to the other side, right? So instead of height, I will simply extend my columns to twice of that. And the range, instead of height minus row plus one, what should be my range? Will this range be enough? Let me just try this. Okay, the range looks bad. So the, okay, if column is equals to, okay, two times height is already good. If the column is greater than the height, okay, there should be an and here. And it should be less than something. Okay, and what is that something less than the row? Could be less than the row. Uh, let's see. Mm, doesn't look good. Okay, it did print the... It should be okay twice the something and less than height minus row. So it should be okay height plus row. Okay, height plus row. And with, let's just adjust with one plus one if it doesn't look good. Okay. So control B. We're just guessing and our guess was correct. Okay, so uh, let's 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 check if the height is correct. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. And indeed the the height is correct. So take note that this range, okay, this, these two conditions provided the, uh, the starting point. So this one is the starting point, and this one is the end point, okay, the end point of your column. So start of the column, end of the column, and after that, we were able to solve the pyramid pattern. So let's proceed with the next problem, which is a hollow pyramid. So let's make that hollow. So uh, let's let me just reuse the method that I uh, wrote or the function that I wrote earlier. Again, this is the time for you to post the video and come up with your own solution. Okay, 
So hopefully you have solved it. Okay, if if not, that's okay. Uh, let's solve it together. So let me just call this a hollow pyramid and prints a hollow pyramid. And this hollow pyramid pattern, height being five, okay, very simple. Let me just print the existing function uh, just to check if it's is still a pyramid, okay? So what condition shall we put here? Ah, it should, it should be equal. Okay, if you notice that we are going to print only the starting point and the end point. So starting point, end point, starting point, end point, except, of the last, except for the last one. Okay, but uh, let's just take care of that later. So I will simply say if the column is equals to the height, okay, minus row, or, okay, take note, do not make this end, uh, otherwise it will not give you any output. So, or column is equal, so since this is less, we should subtract it by one. Okay, let's try to run this. Okay, so this is what I expected. I already have the pyramid pattern, but we need uh, more. Okay, we need also two to add the last line at the bottom, this line here. So you can say that that will occur when the, when the row is equals to height minus one. Um, the condition is a bit long, okay, but, well, we could use our pattern before, the backslash pattern, okay, just to extend our lines of code, and let's run this. So, although it's almost what I wanted, okay, if I count the base, the base give me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So is this base correct? How about, okay, but the height is correct. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, let's make it a bit larger, say 10. Okay, so for 10, okay, still I don't want this extra character. So if that is the case, maybe I could just subtract one in the column part. Okay, let's run this. There. So I got rid of the extra character by subtracting one. And pretty much programming is like that. You look at the output, you don't like it, or you have a unit test that doesn't accept that. You adjust your solution, and hopefully you will get the specification or the requirements of the problem. So in this case, we have already a working solution and that's it for the hollow pyramid. Okay, second to the last. So diamond pattern in this case, write a Python program that prints the diamond pattern of uppercase characters. So in this case, I will simply recycle the pyramid program again. So where's my pyramid? Okay, because this looks to me, the diamond simply looks to me as um, two pyramids. Okay, and then the, the H here is the height to center. Okay, the height to center. So this is my diamond pattern. And prints a diamond pattern. Okay, and I will be putting a, I'll be... How about I just double this? Okay, I just double this. So this one is for upper. The one is for upper. The upper triangle. Uh, let me just comment it as up, upper triangle. Okay, just to separate them. And the lower is the lower triangle. 
okay this is not the the most optimal way to do it okay but again this the the purpose here is to practice so this lower triangle and if if you run this program okay you will you'll simply see the okay what you will see here is the okay pair is like a christmas tree for now uh, but uh, what we can do is we modify the lower triangle so for the lower triangle we have to make it inverted so for it to become inverted we could um, convert the range here and subtract it to maybe minus rho in this case and then let's see okay uh, still didn't give didn't give us what we want okay so for row in height okay for column in range so the range is twice the height okay so this range should be decreasing now so we will we want to make this decreasing so this will be from two to say let's try one or to zero and negative one so we will make it decreasing and let's see if it if it gives us what we want okay still it didn't give us what we wanted a lower triangle Okay, let's print the column here. What are the column values? Okay, the column values is actually Okay, ten nine eight. So ten nine. So if it's a ten nine eight. okay for the printing maybe we could change the printing here okay okay so we could change the condition so maybe that's what we will try to modify so if it's we will put character uh, let's go back to the to the actual output okay so currently what we are doing is we are putting character on this particular range. So the range is when the height minus row. So if, if it's between the height minus row and the column is less than height plus row. So we need to modify this condition for us to have this one. Okay, so instead of okay we could say what if it's less than okay uh
So if it's if the column is greater or equals to the height, so this should not be height. So we could use one condition for now. Uh, put character. Okay, let's just put characters for now. And then let's clean up afterwards. Okay, so this time Okay, we put the character, so it's currently a box. So we could clean the box with a minus one. Okay, so the box is already better. And we need to clean the range here. So this one, okay, I will only put character if okay if column is greater okay greater equals to uh, could be my row Okay, row plus one. Or let's just say row first. And then else put a blank. Okay. Okay, so there. Uh, it behaves now with what we want. So you could add another condition for the upper range. So the upper range should have a column which should be less than, uh, what's the upper range for this? The upper range is two times column minus one, right? So let's just subtract this with uh, minus, minus the row okay so if we subtract the row then it will behave exactly what we wanted but okay but there is something missing here we need to get rid of this first one because from the from the expected output if the distance to center is five Okay, then in this case, there's two centers, one, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three, four, five. So we need to get rid of the other center uh, just to complete this pattern. So to get rid of this center, okay, we could start with, uh, is that for the column or for the height? We could start with one if possible. Okay, exactly what we wanted. So for the height, since we started with one, so this is now one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five. And this is what we wanted. So it, if you could make it larger like 10, uh, let's clear this first. Okay, so this is 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's it. Okay, so that that took a while. Uh, but then again, if, if you have an idea of the output, then you could always readjust your solution. So in our case, we readjusted it. So uh, this part... Let's just explain. Okay, that for us to be able to invert. Okay, this part is 
taking care of, uh, let's explain first the pyramid pattern. So the upper triangle is pretty basic. We simply recycled what we have earlier. So that, that is took care by the upper triangle, just recycling a, an existing code. And then for the lower triangle, what we did is just to readjust. Okay, and uh, the uh, usual tweaking did not work. Okay, so we tweak basically the limits, this one, in the if condition. So this column is greater or equals to the row. This took care of the first, okay, the first limit, the first letter, the starting point of your character. And what gave us the uh, last part will be this one. This is the higher limit minus the row. Okay, and we were able to print the diamond pattern. Okay, the code could be could still be optimized. So in the in the next one, in the last problem, uh, let's come up with a hollow diamond pattern. So I will simply recycle what I did earlier. Okay, so please try to post the video and come up with your own solution. Okay, now that you have uh, your own solution, let's try to solve this one as well. As I've stated earlier, let me just recycle. Okay, I will recycle what I did. And after recycling, Okay, after recycling this, uh, I want to make it hollow one by one. So uh, I already uh, I will make this upper triangle hollow by simply printing. Let's print. This is the hollow diamond. Okay, let's print this the output for the diamond first. Let's limit this to five uh, for it to be manageable in size. Control B. And there is no output yet. So for the hollow diamond, okay, so this is, should be indented. Okay, and the idea is we need to control this part in the middle. So for my uh, lower, uh, for my upper triangle, Okay, all I need to do is to limit okay, this middle parts. And I can easily do that with the condition that I have earlier. So instead of greater than or equal, I will simply say equal or okay, whether it's equal. Remember that this is less than, so we need a minus one for equality. So for the last column. And let's see. Okay. Let's see with the result. And this is exactly what we wanted. Okay, for the upper triangle. And let's take care of the lower triangle. So for the lower triangle is equality as well. So you could just say if greater or equal. So if it's equal or if it's equal to, and then let's subtract it with one. So this will become minus two. Let's just rearrange this a bit. So minus row minus two. And let's run the code. Hopefully this will give us the expected output okay so that is for the lower triangle so this is the expected output and pretty much that's it for our drill so this is just a practice on the conditional statement and iteration uh, just to remind you that you could still optimize this code and the idea is you could use the string manipulation 
uh, which is we will still discuss in the future. So let me just give you um, a preview of string manipulation for the future. Okay, like if I print a certain blank, uh, I could simply say, uh, let, let's print a character. So if I will put a character and let's say that I want uh, 10 spaces or five spaces in between. So I could just uh, print five spaces and multiply it with five. So it will give me five spaces and I will put another character here. So uh, in this case, uh, wait, so put character. So let me, let me just enclose this with, with a string. Okay, unsupported. Okay, so put character, sorry, we are, we are putting character, we're printing something, we're not returning it yet. Uh, but uh, in the future, okay, what I will do is to optimize these commands, I will return the actual character. So instead of, instead of just having a put character there, okay, I could change this to Let's go back to our put character. Okay, I could change this to a, re a return instead of a print. Let me just comment this out. And instead of printing, I will return it. Okay, return the character. And the moment that I return the character, uh, I will be able to control or to manipulate uh, these notations by just concatenating them. So uh, like if I have a blank and then multiply it with five. So I will, what I expect here is I have the actual character, which is random and then separated by five blank spaces. So unsupported, ah, let me run this. Okay, and rerun. So this is what I am trying to tell you that later on we could optimize these patterns by simply manipulating the strings. Okay, in this particular scenario, I have a character on the first position and in the last position, and then there are five blanks. So for example, uh, just for example, if I will come up with a, uh, say a box, if I would come up with a blank box. So let's just try uh, that blank box. So I could simply okay, put a character, so I will have a for loop, for loop, for example, so let's say uh, height is equals to five once again. And if I have a for loop, row in range height. Okay, or this is same side. So instead of uh, coming up with um, nested for loop, I could simply come up with this notation. So I could simply print this one. Okay, with uh, the separation here is five. And after that, Okay, let's make the presentation better. 
Okay, see, you have a, uh, in this case, we, we don't have yet a, uh, the actual box. Okay, but the idea is you could also, you could easily come up with an if else notation. Like I could easily say like if row is the first one, okay, if it is the first row, then what I would do is I will complete uh, maybe in this case, uh, this is one, two, three, four. So what's the size here? Okay, times five. So five plus two characters. So this is six. So I will simply put character if row equals zero, print. Okay, my character then multiplied it with seven. Okay, that is 5 plus 2. And otherwise, okay, I will do the printing of the body. Okay. But in this case, the, the height will no longer be 5. Uh, anyway, we could manipulate that later. So if row is equals to 0 or, okay, the row is equals to the last element. So maybe height minus one okay so control b so in this case let's see let's clear this first okay for for us to have a, the best look so one two three four five and you have here a specific height okay i could say specify a specific width in this case so maybe my width is, I don't know, maybe 10. And the way I approach this, if my width is 10, I will multiply my character because the, the width here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So the width is multiplied here. Okay, and this will be width minus two characters which is used as the sites so i could always readjust these functions now this function now if i have if i want it to be larger like 50 okay and this box uh, maybe with a taller height so as you could see this is more pythonic in a way pythonic being you are utilizing some python uh, any capabilities like multiplying a certain string with a number to repeat that particular string. So this is one optimization that you could think of uh, in the future. Uh, but for now, uh, let's be contented with the review and hopefully you tried the uh, drill problems on your own and it will really help out a lot in your understanding of programming as a whole iterations and conditional statement okay thank you very much for listening and that's it for today